High London. This is as big as never before. This is where AW Roots came from, but this time on a much bigger scale. Looks exactly like AW's WrestleMania. It's all in. I'm in. AW always have matches on Zero Hour, but this time here are two Zero Hours, so it's a long road. Ladies and gentlemen, powerhouse, 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 pa 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 powerhouse hops. Say contract signing for a match at all out between him and Miro. He was about to leave, but Miro song hit. He signed the damn contract, and face to face confrontation evolved into a fight which ended with Miro standing tall and giving Hobbs some threatening words on the mic. Tony Shavani in the ring. Jeff Jarrett and his crew interrupt him to come out to the ring and insult British fans as hard as they could. But one big big man had enough of this crap and his music suddenly hit. It's Paul White aka The Big Show and he is not alone. He picked up Anthony Gogo and Grado to aid him to clean up the ring a little bit. As soon as Paul White stepped up face to face to Satnam Singh, he knocked him out with one weapon of mass destruction punch. Then they eradicated the rest of the crew ending with Guitar Smash and Jared. Well deserved. They didn't let those fools spoil everyone's mood before this great event. But Paul White is too big. He obviously gained a lot of weight again. He struggles walking a bit. He needs to drop some pounds. It's still zero hour, but we got the first match. It's for the Ring of Honor Tag Team Titles. As we know, the champions are arrogant Aussie Open, defending versus Better Than You by Bay, before Colin and MJ face each other in the main event for the big one. Aussie Open unceremoniously attacked fan favorites from behind, what gave them the upper hand for some time. Both teams were gaining advantage over each other occasionally, but Aussie Open were letting them to kick neither kangaroo kick nor double clothesline, and fans were booing Aussie Open because of it. MJF didn't pull off suicide dive, but maybe next time. Aussie Open sandwiched each other. Maxwell struck kangaroo kick and with double clothesline better than you baby picked up Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles. There was never any doubt and it was done perfectly. They both celebrated it, but it wasn't long until they realized what's coming for them later. There is a lot of work to be done yet. Hook was the only one who could stop Jack Perry from retiring FTW Championship and he did it. But now he has to finish the job and take the title away from Jack. This day is huge as they could not wait to get their hands on each other by starting the fight on the rampway around Jack Perry's limousine. Even the real glass came into the game, yes, you know what I'm talking about. Inside the ring Hook took Jungle Jack to Suplex City. Bashed his head with trash can and after hammer and anvil shot stabbed him out in red rum. That's who this FTW championship belongs with, the fighter Hook. Not lazy slacker like Jack Perry. Jack has not become great heel. He doesn't have enough heel charisma. That's obvious. We have successfully made it to the real start. We start big. For the so-called real world championship between Fat Samoa Joe and Lean Technical CM Punk. Their entrances felt huge inside Wembley Stadium. CM Punk tried to frustrate Samoa Joe by trolling him and smiling his face. And as I can say it worked. CM Punk was having a lot of fun. He likes being hated and lives his best life on his terms. On the other side Samoa Joe was cheered every time he had the upper hand and he was in good mood as well. Joe drove Punk under the table and Punk bled a lot on his forehead. This concussion gave Samoa Joe some advantage to dominate for some time. CM Punk loves hype and that's why he mocked John Cena and Hulk Hogan. But after leg drop Samoa Joe kicked out after one. And after hulking up in Hogan's style unleashed on CM Punk. CM Punk knocked Joe with roundhouse kick. Escaped dangerous muscle buster and the top rope out of nowhere pulled out his old finisher Pepsi Plunge. What was enough to decisively beat Joe and remain the real world champion. Quite slow match, but these guys are not in their 20s and at least they showed a lot of their skills, so the match is decent. As we all know, CM Punk had serious backstage conflict with Jack Perry and after Jack disrespected CM Punk about real glass, the best in the world decided to put this kid in his place and choke him out for real. It led to Tony Khan finally firing CM Punk, so it turns out that Punk left with the title again. There are gonna be a lot of rumors about where he finds himself next. Fans are already speculating about WWE. This is mystery. 
Tony Khan didn't even try to restore Punk's relationship with his co-workers. He just lost his biggest star. Rating of this match is 3.5. Jush is on the loose with Bang Bang Bullet Club Gold Game following Kanowski Takeshita accompanied by his father Don Callis basking in heat. This trio faces Kenny Omega of two of his greatest tag team partners Hangman Adam Page and Kota Ibushi. Hangman had his problems with Jush. Kota Ibushi was testing his limits against Jay White and of course Kenny Omega wanted revenge on Kanowski Takeshita. Omega was dominating but Bullet Club used numbers game and it worked. Omega and Takeshita tested their skills and tried to find out who's better in the ring. Everyone knew their role and their in-ring connection was too sweet. Kenny was busy taking out everybody including dominating Takeshita and his tag team partners helped him with their classic mutual teamwork. Takeshita took out Ibushi with jumping knee. Hangman hit Kanowski Flariat from behind and Omega was supposed to end the match. But Jay White and Jush Robinson distracted him. What allowed Takeshita to regroup and come from behind like a snake to roll Kenny up and steal the victory out of nowhere. You have such a giant WrestleMania-like event. You form such a massive babyface team. And you not only make them lose, but make them lose suddenly. And all of this for Takeshita? I hate this decision, especially considering that Kenny Omega loses too often and too much. I needed a win like this here, but he got pinned again. I am disappointed, but the match is amazing classic in its own right. Rating is 425 stars. Next match is the third match in great rivalry between Young Bucks and AW World Tag Team Champions FTR. Both these teams have professional respect for what they are capable of, no doubt but they don't like each other personally. Both FTR and Bucks are deciding right now who's gonna go down as the greatest and better than the other. I know this feeling. Young Bucks are little. They can catch you off guard at any time. What about FTR? They are very smart and accurate technicians. They always know how to adapt. This is what makes their matches so interesting to watch. Their first AEW match took place at full gear of 2020 and I still remember it brightly. The same about the second match. It always feels like they're gonna fight forever and that match may never end. Of course there were many fake finishes, but both teams kept fighting. They even ran back to what happened in their previous matches. Like FTR Trigger followed by Shutter Machine where Nick kicked out. Then Cash Wheeler again missed Springboard 50 Splash and got hit by that same old super kick. And here Cash kicked out. After Cash received BT Trigger, Dax stopped the pinfall who got spiked with Buck's Shutter Machine. And after one more devastating BT Trigger unkillable, Cash Wheeler again kicked out. But this was too much already in my opinion. FTR intercepted Meltzer Driver and with final Shutter Machine finished the match. Finally. There was too much protection and indestructibility in them, but for once it will pass. It's normal. FTR calling themselves top guys is not a me for catchphrase. They prove it time after time. Nick and Matt refused to shake hands with FTR, but we found out it was because they were upset about the loss, not because they don't respect them. A rating of this classic is 4.5 stars. Legendary Stadium Stampede match returns this time inside Wembley Stadium. Savage Hills BCC, former Inner Circle members Santana and Ortiz, versus best friends Penta, International Champion Orange Cassidy and Rabbit Animal Eddie Kingston, who wasn't gonna wait and ran into Claudia like a cannonball. The war raged on all over the stadium. Wherever they could go, whatever they could use, they did. So many personal issues on many fronts we had here. What happened to John Moxley's head is not PG. Turn it off. Penta literally inserted skewers into his forehead. Orange Cassidy wanted to play with fire, but then Moxley pulled a fork out of his pocket and knocked Cassidy out with it on the back of the head. When you mess with fire, you gotta fight fire with fire. Orange Cassidy needs to learn that. Up there in the bar, Claudia and you to neutralize Teddy Kingston came down to help their teammates on the ramp and dominated until Trent Barretta's mom returned in a new car. Yes, she drove Hero the way from the America through the entire ocean just on a car. This is how powerful she is. Really. 
Also, Penta is not only having zero mieda, but now is going to shrug fear into others because his dark side has returned. Penta Oscuro. Best friends in Orange give Willer Yuta what he wants and then beat him up for all the good. Three orange punches were not enough to keep Claudia down. Cassidy needed to stack broken glass into his fist to win it, but it was two on one and Orange was about to lose. But the savior has returned. Wild madman Eddie Kingston destroyed everybody in his way, including Claudia and Moxley, and while he was holding Moxley back, the international Cassidy finished his business with Claudia Castagnoli. How much damage and injuries has Orange Cassidy already taken throughout his reign and still survived this crazy match's trademark toughness? This will impact his overall health, but he does it for his great legacy. An MVP of this match is Eddie Kingston. He was the key factor in winning this thing. The only things left in their feuds are for John Moxley to face Orange Cassidy at All Out and for Eddie to get his personal revenge on Claudia. Rating of Stadium Stampede War is 425. The now is the four-way match for Women's World Championship. England's own Saraya made her entrance with We Will Rock You song and the whole stadium cheered. Three others are Tony Storm, Britt Baker and the champion Hikaru Shida. Where women wrestle combined with when there are more than two or three of them, it is always chaos and panic. They go wild. Just one minute into a match and Storm with Saraya already had disagreements and Saraya called Tony stupid. When there is one big championship on the line, you really find out how strong is a friendship between two people. Later, Tony Storm let Saraya's mother help them by holding Britain Paul Nelson, but DMD escaped and Storm hit Saraya's mom. You fucked up, Tony. Saraya herself did not take that kindly and called her not just stupid, but stupid bitch already and then they had a grudge fight. Even Ruby Soho couldn't help as Tony even hit her as well. Brit and Shida also had their time in this matchup and when Shida was in the locked jaw, Saraya quickly spray painted Tony Storm's face. And after Fisherman Buster got ahead of Brit Baker and picked up the championship by pinning Tony Storm. On this big event, the giant stadium, being from this great country, after this amazing entrance and in front of her whole family it was coming. That was coming. Barely any doubt. Tony Storm messed up a lot of things lately and she went crazy, but the outcasts still exist, and their leader is champion. Hikaru Shida is boring, but Saraya as charismatic champion can draw a lot of money for the company. Rating of the match is 3 stars. Do you know what time it is? It's showtime. Swerve Strickland teams up with Father of the Year Christian Cage to face their Judgment Day courtesy of the Immortal Sting and Darby Allen which came to Metallica's song Seek and Destroy. Ever since Swerve and Fox left Nick Wayne in Pool of Blood, I immediately realized that Sting will not just leave it like that. And he brought the Nightmare on them and Dynamite, and he is going to finish the job here. Evil never prospers against Sting, because the icon is always one step ahead. But it wasn't easy for Darby and Sting because their enemies were using numbers games of Prince Nanan after Sting's two hilarious high-flying jumps Luchasaurus arrived. And it would be the end for Sting and Darby if not for Nick Wayne who tried to use skateboard on Dinosaur which had no effect. But at least Nick diverted Luchasaurus' attention away from this match and the monster picked up and carried Wayne to the back to eat them up there. But at least he sacrificed himself for the team. Swerve escaped coffin drop and Sting left alone against two, but the Joker was still swinging for defenses. He never gives up. When Sting had Christian Scorpion Deflux, Swerve hit him with steel chair, but it only pissed the Stinger off. Sting, if you're that powerful and invincible, go for the World Championship. Let's go, man! But numbers came caught up to him, and after taking out Darby Allen, Strickland wanted to slowly bury Sting, but he saved himself with a butt. Meanwhile, Christian Cage was choking Darby out, Swerve missed for 50 splash, and after Darby knocked out Christian with TNT title belt, Sting hit Scorpion Death Drop on the coffin, and even though Swerve saved himself his own wrists, Darby finished the job by sandwiching him with Coffin Drop and sending him packing for good. 
It was the scariest Sting AW match as I feel it in terms of resolve. He was the closest to losing here and I did not want it to happen this way from idiots like Swerve and Christian. So I was never happier for Sting winning. I felt so satisfied. And also they got revenge on them for Nick Wayne. Great hardcore match. But Luchasaurus awaits Darby Allin for All Out and it will be very hard task. Rating of this extreme match is 4 and 25. Next is not a match, but a concert courtesy of the great Chris Jericho who sang his own theme song on the way to the ring accompanied by Sammy Guevara. And his opponent is young, talented, red hot Will Osprey accompanied by Snake Don Callis. Chris Jericho is hard to beat. He knows all the tricks, all the timings and can catch you off guard at any time. But being as skilled and fast as Will Osprey, he always had answer and was storming over Jericho. Chris obviously couldn't keep up with Osprey's speed. But the Ocho had no remorse for Will Osprey and by using his experience was damaging Osprey heavily. Jericho had absolutely zero respect for this British boy. But because he's British he was supported by fans here meanwhile Chris was booed. But that's okay. Middle finger for them all. Chris Jericho doesn't go easy on any younger opponent. He always wants to break them hard and end their careers. He wants to be the best at what he does forever. And he also was dishing out a lot of high-flying moves. It wasn't just Osprey. When Chris was torturing Will in the walls, Don Callis distracted Aubrey Edwards. But Sammy was one step further and he hit Osprey with butt to the head, but Will stayed in the match. Later he showed Chris Jericho that he is nowhere ready to lose and kicked out after one with a parity. Genius Chris outsmarted Aubrey and hit low blow followed by Judas Effect where home countryman Osprey survived by kicking out. After a series of attacks Will Osprey dropped Jericho with Stormbreaker but the Ocho's Will kicked out at the last momento. And after middle finger from Jericho it took hit and blade with another Stormbreaker to close out the match with the victory for Will Osprey. This matchup was the example that more time doesn't mean better match because it only took them 14 minutes to wrestle outstanding classy bout. Chris Jericho is one of a kind regarding longevity and Osprey's very skilled generational talent. So this could not be a bad match. Of course was predictable about the winner but they both benefited from it. This did not disappoint. Beautiful match. Jericho was upset and pushed Sammy away in emotions but he apologized for it on next Dynamite. So that's good and interesting for their story which is about to come next. Rating is 4.5 stars. Owen's massive attendance is 81,035. But I doubt it as they immediately showed some full areas being empty. But WWE did it many times as well so I don't blame them. If that's true this is like AW WrestleMania. For AEW this is their first time, one of the most attended wrestling shows ever anyway on same level of WrestleManias. Fans pay tribute to Bray Wyatt with Fireflies and House of Black do the same with Lantern. Dominant champions defend against fan favorites acclaimed and serious focused Billy Gunn who is not retired, he's back. No scissor me daddy ass, just badass Billy Gunn. They chose no holds barred, no excuses, all out. Billy Gunn was the center of House of Black's attention but they claimed were always there for him. And when Julia Hart tried to interfere Badass quickly let her know that she will have to suck it. And she ate scissor me timbers. House of Black all recovered and unleashed their wrath on baby faces. Billy Gunn did not stay down and stood up to kick their asses on his own. Badass came prepared. House of Black did not let them to finish and this had to be long and hard fight. Brody King accidentally cracked his leader Malakai with chain in the head but despite Billy Gunn getting guaranteed pinfall on Buddy Matthews, Julia Hart pulled out Aubrey Edwards to stop it. The scariest moment was to be Malakai hitting the end on Billy but Daddy Billy but Ganas kicked out this time. He was prepared this time. Billy Gunn escaped Dante's Inferno but after the arrival on mic drop the monster Brody kicked out after freaking won. But he was all alone, it was only a matter of time, so three of them cut him down the size and put him through hell to pin him together and finally triumphantly win those sweet world trios championships. No one boos, everyone cheers, they claimed. No one hates, everyone loves, they claimed.
Don't forget Badass Daddy as Billy Gunn, who's in the peak of his popularity right now. House of Black took the titles away from them, only to finally acknowledge new champions and award them with the titles. No more excuses and blindsiding attacks. Respect is finally earned. Also, Caesar Me Daddy has finally happened in front of 80,000 people. Hell yeah! Billy Gunn has reignited his career championship goat and House of Ass has arrived. Rating of the match is 3 and 25. MJF and Adam Cole's story transcended into something no one first expected but surely wanted it to be this way. In our main event, bro churches for life face each other one on one for the EW World Championship. Despite huge tag team and friendship success, tension between them here is bigger than ever. Championship is bigger than friendship for both of them. But despite this fact, they still put their better than you baby t-shirts on each other and then the battle began. MJF was the first who started mind games and he offered a handshake which Cole accepted. But when he offered some sportsmanship the second time, he gouged Cole's eyes. He outsmarted him right there. But MJF was still trying to apologize and do it again but Adam Cole slapped him in the face and went bizarre like a rabbit animal. Adam Cole was done playing games. He even used Brian Ramsburg to trick MJF and beat him up. For all those things he was getting a lot of booze and was basking in them. Also MJF couldn't pull the trigger with suicide dive and that's why Cole was taking advantage of it. And he even took the shirt off of MJF letting him know that games are over. MJF finally took the suicide dive and landed perfectly but surprised himself. It was very versatile, excellent exchange and Dil Adam Cole used steel steps for huge scary damage. Cole wanted count out win and I don't know why. He would not win championship after all. But MJF miraculously made it back to the ring. Later MJF knew he needed to tombstone Adam Cole into the announce table but he hesitated and shockingly refused to do it. I never thought we would see this MJF. But Adam Cole did not think twice and he tombstoned him immediately. This was huge mistake by the champion. Cole started receiving louder boos and even asshole chants. But how could we be left without this? Double clothesline! They hit on each other was followed by a double pinfall where they both got pinned. They pinned each other, it's a draw. The champion retains. Everyone go home. Bye bye. See you yesterday. Or not. And here we go. Five more Minutes. And Jeff said no. We're going until we get the fucking winner. So tension got bigger than ever and they both tried to finish the match in panic that even Brian Ramsburg got knocked. MJF brought the chair and took it to the next level of Eddie Guerrero trick like a true genius. And this gave him the window for advantage. Later Cole hit Brian's with Panama Sunrise instead of MJF and this time Ramsburg got out for good. MJF pulled out diamond ring but still refused to use it. I don't recognize him. And then this pathetic snake Roderick Strong hit MJF with low blow. Adam did with Panama Sunrise in the last shot but Brimes after 5 years barely slowly crawled to make the cover. Which allowed MJF to heroically kick out before free. Strong tossed the EW World title belt to Cole and screamed at Cole to do it and it would be a guaranteed win but Adam also refused to do it and he sent Roderick Strong packing into the back. This hesitation allowed MJF to recover and roll Cole up inside Cradle to finally retain his triple B gold. Adam Cole realized what happened, he was so saddened about it. MJF noticed it and crawled to Cole to remind him that these people still love him, that he got lucky and he still got tag team belt. But Cole wanted to have nothing with it and dropped those tag titles away. Then Maxwell realized that it's time to put their friendship on the line and test Adam's loyalty and allegiance the same way Cole did it one month ago. Also, Roderick Strong was encouraging Adam Cole on the apron to do it, but after long thinking, Adam finally dropped Triple B away and refused to end their friendship. Of course, Roderick Strong had enough and left, meanwhile, bro churches hugged it out in the center of the ring. No heel turns, no low blows, no betrayals. Friendship for life. Happy end. These two came from random tag team tournament pairing through multiple hard rituals. Tests, so to speak, to finally make their friendship unbreakable. Even in a match for championship, they couldn't pull the trigger sometimes. This is not a joke. 
I think their feud is over at least for some time, but their story is of course not. Not only they are tag team champions together, but this whole huge storyline thing with Roderick Strong is gonna last very long. Maybe a year I predict. So let's see where do we get next. Also we found out that All In will return in a year in 2024. So we will feel this vibe again. Awesome. They not just gave us 11 matches which is a lot, but each of those worked out in a full way. So much deep action that you can easily get lost in it. So much wrestling. I was just sitting back, relaxing and watching it having forgotten about everything else that doesn't matter. Also I forgot to say that rating of the main event match is 4.5 and, and here are my big ratings. Take it in. And thanks for buying all in Wembley ticket. Now it's time for you to get back to America and see you yesterday. The game general.